All right, everyone, welcome. And Jenks, thanks for joining us today. I hope uh, you all can hear me and see me okay. Uh, but we're excited to hear to, to share a little bit more about our high modulus journey here at Owens Corning. So let's jump right in. So uh, obviously I'm this guy here on the right. Uh, I'm Patrick Sullivan, our, our product leader for our wind business uh, across our portfolio of, of products that go into wind blades, essentially. Um, to, to really introduce Owens Corning and, and our vision within the wind industry, I think it would be best to just let this video do it for me, essentially. Uh, so we're gonna watch here a, a quick brief video on who we are and, and why we focus on the wind industry. The challenges we face in life shape the course of our future. Do we rise to the occasion, overcome the odds? Most importantly, do we go it alone? all come together to find a solution. We're here to help you build a greener, more efficient world where cities, agriculture, manufacturing, education, and communities all come together to contribute to a better quality of life. Creating this reality calls for innovative, cost-effective, clean energy solutions. It requires lighter, stronger, sustainable materials because as the world and climate continue to change, we must too, working together to make the impossible possible. It's how we power now. So I think that video does a, a lot nicer job than what I could potentially put in my own words here, of course. Um, but here you see really our vision and our purpose for how we view we can make the world a better place and, and through supporting this industry. So let's talk about the how, because the how is, is the interesting part here in terms of what Owens Corning can do to support our customers and our industry partners. And it's really about material science and materials engineering partnership with the industry, about creating a new set of possibilities with our customers and our partners in the industry to make impossible things, to advance technologies and ultimately to drive us to a, a future that is decarbonized in a better world. So specifically in this case today, you know, we're talking about expanding the number of tools in the toolbox per se for the wind industry. So as we think about material science and glass fiber and composite materials, for us, it goes back to the earliest 20th century where Owens Corning was really founded around this invention of the glass fiber. And since that time, Owens Corning has really worked to build many applications in different areas for how glass fiber can improve the daily lives of every uh, around the world. Especially in composites, we see today from the inventing new different types of glasses to developing different types of applications, that tradition is really strong and, and core to our DNA as a company. And tomorrow you'll hear more about uh, how we support non-wind markets and, and leading higher performance composites to new heights from my friends Amol and Patrick. Um, and today we're gonna focus specifically on how higher performance is really driving the wind industry. So here you can see kind of the brief history of, of high modulus glass within the wind industry. So back at the beginning of this century, uh, the wind industry, you know, had had challenges, right? Similar to today, they were trying to increase blade lengths. Uh, they were trying to scale the industry. Uh, and from a materials perspective, glass at that time was not good enough. Uh, at the time, it was traditional E or ECR glasses um, that were predominantly used. And those glasses just simply did not have the performance needed to, to extend blade lengths. Back then, we were talking about blades that were 30 meters, 40 meters long, and how can you use a higher modulus fiber to get to 45 meters or 50 meters? Um, a lot has changed since then, especially the size of these turbines. Um, but back then, the, the invention of the first high modulus glass fiber for wind really kicked off a new generation. And OSC invented this glass just over 15 years ago. And overall, high modulus glass across the wind industry has really become dominant and has been adopted in spar caps, shells, and root segments. Um, we estimate today that something around 45% or more of all glass fiber that's used in a wind blade is a higher modulus glass product. This has completely transformed the industry. This massive ramp up we've seen over the past decade of gigawatt installations and of course the drop in the levelized cost of energy over that time as well 
has a lot to do with the fact that blades have gotten longer and longer, which is driving up the AEP of these turbine platforms uh, to be able to really drive down the cost of energy. Today, when we talk about onshore blades, right, we're talking about 60, 70, 80 meter blades. And offshore, we're talking about over 100 meter blades, and these will continue to grow. And at Owens Corning, we're trying to think of the materials that is going to drive this performance forward. So we continue to adapt ourselves and grow and evolve with the industry as these things change. You know, being a materials engineering partner is core to who we need to be and providing the tools to allow our blade designers and engineers at our customers to make better and better blades. Whether it's new glasses, new productivity solutions, whatever can be done to continue to allow them to drive for a reduction in the cost of energy. This isn't just simply mechanical or physical performance either. Thinking about the sustainability of the whole blade and the material system being used and how can we actually improve that? How can we eliminate waste throughout the whole supply chain? How do we reduce the embodied carbon of a blade and how do we close the loop? These are big challenges that we see ourselves playing an active role in. And this mindset continues to take takes us to the next step. And what comes next within Owens Corning and for the wind industry is driving higher modulus solutions to again, increase the length of these blades and do so do it more sustainably as well. So today I'm happy to, to introduce our second generation high modulus glass for wind. H2 glass uh, is, is a new glass that Owens Corning is offering uh, that is now being produced on a large scale melter um, to really drive this, this current generation of blades that we're seeing today. This technology is, has been quite remarkable in terms of being able to increase the modulus of the glass without changing the density off of the first generation glasses. This has led to having the highest specific modulus in a glass fiber for the wind industry. H2's performance, of course, can be leveraged in, in a few different ways in, in a blade, and particularly either through our, our funidirectional fabrics lineup or in our ultraspar lineup. And ultraspar is, is a new offering from Owens Corning. Uh, this is where we are seeing a fast growing trend in adopting protrusion for spar cap planks um, in the industry to leverage the higher fiber volume fraction. This is a, a fast growing trend that really leverages more of the fibers performance and really enables H2 to go to the new heights. So as we talk about performance of these products, you know, a lot of it comes down to the modulus number and, and scientists and companies like the debate on test methods and what measurement gets you the highest number you can put out a page. Here at Owens Cording, you know, the method we use is the single filament sonic fiber glass modulus, which is the best correlator to, to performance of the laminate. And with this product, it's a 91 gigapascal glass, and which is about a 5% increase over first generation high modulus glass fibers. And again, this is while maintaining the same density of the glass itself. So driving up that specific modulus of the fiber. Translating this into a fabric, uh, at 55% fiber volume fraction, you're going to be able to achieve a 51 gigapascal performance. And again, uh, talking about a protruded plank for ultra spar, this is where you see that that higher fiber volume fraction come in at 63 gigapascals of performance. These products collectively are, are starting to drive a transformation in the market, particularly in China, where we see blades are being designed based on these levels of performance to achieve the LCOE reductions that are really needed now that they have to compete in a subsidy free market in China. So we see a fast growing trend of these this level of performance, these second generation high modulus glasses being adopted at an increasing rate. But we're not done here either. We want to keep going and keep innovating. So I'm excited to share a little bit more about H3 glass. Our next glass that's in the pipeline here at Owens Corning to really continue to push the performance curve of what glass fiber can really do. So H3 glass will be another 5% increment in performance over the second generation high modulus glasses. That's about a 10% improvement over first generation H glasses. And keep in mind, many people in the industry are still using that first generation high modulus glass fiber. So that is a substantial improvement for what many are seeing today. This performance is really possible by our innovation and our glass science. 
and our team has been learning over the past 15 years of leading the industry in high modulus glasses or how to invent and develop new glasses and industrialize them. It's around exploring new fundamental science in these areas and how do we not only invent glasses, but invent glasses that can scale with the wind industry. One of the common challenges with wind is just the sheer size and it's not good enough to make a couple kilotons of product. You need hundreds of kilotons of product to be able to actually support the industry for what they need. So this requires substantial investment in R&D and in industrialization technologies to be able to perform these things. And this development is what we're pursuing now uh, to, to support the blades of the future. So here you can kind of see the, the portfolio of what this performance really looks like overall on the left hand side here you see the unidirectional fabric uh, of our ultra blade fabrics and where you see the step change continue step in performance increase and on the right hand side you see it in a pultruded plank which again shows how you can leverage the higher fiber volume fraction to continue to improve the overall laminate modulus in terms of timing we're we're starting now to to, to really work with our customers on how we can support them in their design efforts and their engineering efforts for how they could leverage this new material in their in their blades and in their technology. By the end of this year, we'll, we'll be producing new data and also having small samples of product available for our customers to really advance their process and designing and incorporating this new glass. And as we evaluate the adoption rate of this glass in the market, and based on our customers and, and feedback, we currently plan to have this available by the end of 2022. But in shifting gears as well, as I mentioned earlier about sustainability, it's not just the performance of the fiber that counts. You know, a lot of people within the industry always say sustainability is important. And it's a really good question of, of how, how do you actually support these claims? Um, and I think one of the key things is within the wind industry, we're seeing this shift from where it was just okay to say that you, your products are being used in, in wind and that your products enable the lighter, longer, stronger blade and that in and of itself made you sustainable. But that's not really the case anymore. Uh, the supply chain matters, the materials matter, the embodied carbon of the blade matters. And so we're seeing a big shift with our customers in the industry and how we think about sustainability. And we see ourselves in the driver's seat of, of these conversations as well of how do we progress and advance our sustainability too. So here I wanted to share a few of our, our goals that we've made as well. So the first one is around reducing our carbon emissions, which is a big goal of reducing them by half our absolute emissions uh, for scope one and scope two, and by 30% our scope three emissions. And again, these are absolute emissions, which is a challenge uh, that we're glad to, to go after um, and, and continue to improve upon there. When we talk about waste, we need we are committing to zero waste to landfill as well. And also this commitment is to working with our customers throughout the blade making supply chain that can be a rather wasteful process overall when it comes to all the steps in the supply chain and the waste that's created from materials. And then lastly, as it's pointing to this presentation, powering ourselves with 100% renewable electricity. And it's something that we're well on our way to doing, um, but there's of course more to get to this goal. So these are some very strong goals and in, in, in what we wanna do to continue to advance ourselves uh, and really go into this decarbonized uh, business model of the future, essentially. And to highlight a, a couple of these a little bit more, one is this renewable electricity commitment um, where here on the left hand side, some people may not be as familiar with our roofing and insulation businesses, but we sell last year, we sold over $2 billion worth of products that were made with hundred percent wind power, um, which is quite substantial. And, and that's driven a lot by our U S operations that have converted to renewable electricity at a really high rate. And we're looking to expand across the world. Here we also show that our specific plants within within wind um, in Europe are switching to 100% electricity as well. And we'll continue this trend uh, and hope to accelerate this as well. And then on the right hand side, you see this consortium we're a part, a part of with our industry partners to really go after the end of life issue. 
to be able to create a 100% recyclable blade um, that can help us close the loop and figure out a solution. Um, every year, you know, the size of the glass fiber market um, for wind specifically is in the hundreds of kilotons a year. And if you're putting that much into a blade every year, imagine what's coming off in 20 years from now, 30 years from now. So these solutions are really important in terms of driving and having a sustainable future. So with that, I'd like to, to wrap up um, this presentation. Again, we're incredibly excited to, to announce our H2 and H3 glasses. We're excited to see what our customers and, and our partners in the industry can do with them. Um, and we look aggressively to the future of how do we rapidly decarbonize our platform and our operations to be able to pursue the sustainability journey in partnership with our customers. So with that, um, I'd like to could take a few questions here. I believe we got a couple minutes um, to answer some questions. So the first one I see here is around having sizing specific for vinyl ester resins. And yes, uh, so for these new glasses, we'll offer these in kind of the current portfolio of sizings that Owens Corning has for wind, which support epoxy or vinyl ester based resins as well. So another question that I have here is around where these new fibers will be manufactured. Um, so our our first set of, um, for H2 glass, our first industrialization plan and our first melter is actually based in, in China. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the adoption rate and the uh, size of the wind market in China is large and the adoption of this glass into their new blade size uh, made the most sense to have our production located in China to support that market. As we continue to see H2 glass grow around the world, we'll of course always reevaluate where we have our capacity and how we can best support our customers. In terms of H3, um, we as again, it's a similar story as, as we see how our customers adopt this glass and where demand will be and where we need to be to support those customers, we'll evaluate what locations we should produce H3 at. So another question I have here is around what degree do you think H2 and H3 glasses will compete with carbon fiber? Um, so that's a really good question. Um, so obviously carbon fiber from a performance, from a material performance standpoint is, is significantly higher still than, than these glasses on their own from a fiber to fiber comparison. Um, but we really see three things within the industry um, that really support the, the adoption of higher modulus glasses when it comes to carbon fiber. I mean, the first one is just sheer availability of carbon fiber um, for how that industry operates. Uh, capacity increments right in the one to two kiloton range per line, a lot of capital intensity to invest in those lines. And importantly, it takes a long time to build those, those lines. And one of the challenges I think we see within the wind industry is just the sheer scale and the speed of being able to expand capacity so rapidly to be able to support this industry. And, and with the adoption of, of carbon fiber and more blades, we actually foresee a, a real capacity crunch in the, in the carbon fiber industry, call it in the next two to four years, that we really think will drive uh, the, the blade designers and engineers to try to more smartly engineer blades to reduce the overall amount of carbon fiber in those structures given that challenge. And that leads to point two, which is we, we think the price of these car of carbon fiber will continue to be a challenge for its adoption and wind, given the limited capacity, given um, you know, its demand in other markets outside of wind within the new hydrogen economy, within other applications, I think it'll be challenging to get low cost carbon fiber within the wind industry. And then third, again, it's a really around sustainability. Um, you know, when we see our customers caring more and more about the embodied carbon of their blade and carbon neutrality, we see it as a challenge uh, with carbon fiber because of its, of being pan based carbon fiber has a substantial, substantial energy intake. And it's an order of magnitude greater than metals, greater than glass fiber. And we see that as a real challenge. So as we see our customers design blades to be more sustainable in the future, 
we think using higher modulus glasses is the way to do it to reduce the, the carbon emissions or the embodied carbon of the blade essentially. And how do you reduce your amount of carbon fiber to the exact amount you really need in your blade structure and supplementing it with higher modulus glasses, either in hybrid spar cap designs or in shell and root segments in a structural design. Um, that's how we see higher, higher modulus glasses continue to play. So I think that's it for, for the time that I have. So I want to thank you all for, for joining and uh, listening to us today. And, and please reach out if, if you have any further questions or want to contact us in any way. Thanks, everyone.